Welcome to Addicted to Watches. Today, we're looking at a watch that is a little older now, but I can remember being so excited for it when it was announced and first released. It was a watch from Seiko that ticked all the boxes for me, and still does all this time later. This is the Seiko Samurai SRPD-23, also known as the Great White. Seiko has a proud history of making dive watches going back all the way to 1965. Over the years, they have introduced many different and iconic lines of dive watches and are so loved by passionate Seiko collectors that many of them have been nicknamed. There are turtles, monsters, tuna, starfish, sea urchin, sumo, shogun, and this one I have here, a samurai. This samurai is a certified dive watch, meaning it has achieved ISO rating standards and can say divers on the dial there. But, why is it called a samurai? After all, samurai weren't especially known to be good swimmers. Some people say it's because of the flat surfaces of the case and the sharp edges and angles they create. But actually, if you go back to the first generation of this model family, you can see a big difference between this and those original ones is the hands. The hands on the first generation closely resemble the shape of swords, and that's how it got its nickname. But time waits for no one, and with time the samurai has evolved to a much broader and more legible handset. It has also evolved into a range of special and limited editions. One in particular which has been recurring is the STO, or Save the Ocean series. These watches are made to promote an initiative which aims to reduce and clean up ocean debris. There have been quite a few Save the Ocean limited editions, but this one, the Great White, is by far my favourite. It also came at the perfect time for me in my collection. Up until the point when this was released, I had really been wanting a Seiko dive watch with a brilliant blue dial. I had been looking at another limited edition, the Blue Lagoon, which features a similar colour but was at that time already sold out and selling for high prices on the second hand market. At the same time, I was also lusting after an Omega Seamaster with the wave pattern dial. I was not considering getting one of those, but really liked the idea. Then, along comes Seiko with a blurry, compressed JPEG image of their watches to be released sometime soon. No details, just a single picture, but I was sold then and there. It was to be a reasonably priced watch that ticked a lot of my boxes. Seiko dive watch? Yes. Beautiful blue colour? Yes. Wave pattern dial? Yes. Available now? No. It was an agonising wait for more information over the coming months, but my patience eventually paid off and I was able to pick one of these up below retail the day before the official release, thanks to a friendly shop close to my workplace. Remember when you could get watches below retail? RRP on these is a slightly ridiculous 799 Australian dollars, but you should never be paying full price for a Seiko. Enough about that though, let's take a look at the watch and at the star of the show, that fantastic dial. We'll get to the reason it's called a great white, but for now we can see a brilliant rich blue sunburst dial that has an etched wave pattern. When the light hits this dial, it can change from a deep blue almost navy to a sky blue that does conjure images of the ocean. Dial layout is consistent with other samurai watches too. A combination of applied rectangles, trapezium, and double markers at 12. Unlike the markers, the Seiko logo is not applied, but only printed in white. As is the Prospex X, automatic, and divers 200 meters underneath the pinion. Even with a date at 3 o'clock, I feel the dial is quite balanced due to the white date wheel. Surrounding that dial is a chapter ring of matching colour to help you read the time accurately. Each 5 minutes is marked with a large wide rectangle and a thin line for the minutes in between. You can also see that printed very finely between those are fifth of a minute markers, which provide some visual detail. As mentioned, the hands of this watch are not the same as those original ones that got the watch its nickname, but they are the new standard for modern samurai watches. An arrowhead hour hand is split down the middle into two sections, while the minute hand is a more simple fence post shape. 
The second hand features an arrow tip, and this particular model has a slightly unusual counterbalance on the second hand. A fun little thing to note here is that when the minute hand passes over the hour hand, it makes a little rocket ship. Okay, by now I'm sure you've seen them, but for those of you up the back, I'll go through them. This particular Save the Ocean model is called the Great White due to two little details on the watch. The first is on the dial near the 8 o'clock marker. In amongst those waves, you can see just peeking out the fin of a shark just below the surface. It's easy to miss, especially with all the other waves and lines on the dial. The second detail brings us back to the handset. That counterbalance I mentioned on the second hand is made to look like the tail of a shark. That first STO watch from Seiko did not have any animal imagery on it, but this and many since have. Sharks, manta rays and penguins have made appearances or left their tracks behind on Seiko Save the Ocean watches. Moving a little further out, we come to what can at first look like a relatively simple bicolor bezel insert. But if you look more closely, it is actually made up of a series of concentric circles, giving it a subtle but interesting texture. I'm glad the bezel on this watch is subtle, because not much else is. This bezel actually has a surprising amount of depth to it. All of the numbers and markings are not printed, but actually recessed from the main blue and grey parts of the insert. It is almost like the inverse of a relief bezel. Since this is a dive watch, there is a recessed loom pip at the 12 o'clock, and overall, I'd say the alignment on this watch is not bad. Pretty good by Seiko standards, but maybe ever so slightly off. The bezel itself features a coin edge, which makes it easy to grip and turn. Moving on to the case of the watch, we can see those fine edges, flat surfaces and sharp angles I mentioned earlier. The Samurai has a very distinct case shape, and while big on paper, we know by now that Seiko are good at making a big watch wear like a much smaller one. In terms of measurements, we have a 43.8mm case diameter, bigger than I'd normally prefer but for this one I make an exception. It, combined with a height of 13.5mm, helps it wear quite flat on wrist and not feel particularly thick. Part of what makes this watch wear so well is the short lug to lug of just 48mm, which is typical of watches closer to 40mm than 44 Finally, and thankfully, a fairly standard lug width at 22mm and you know there are going to be a lot of straps that work really well on this watch. Measurements are one thing, but what is the case actually like? Well, of course it's angular with all those flat surfaces, but it's actually more interesting than that. On one side, it has crown guards that protect a decently sized knurled crown that is easy to grip and unscrew. These crown guards taper from the top and bottom as they approach the crown, but not equally, the tips of the guards end up finishing somewhere like two-thirds of the way up the crown, which actually makes it easier to get a good grip on it. A small design detail that goes a long way. The other side of the case holds an equally interesting detail. Apart from this piece here and the case back, the entire case is done in a brushed finish, which I like. It keeps the watch feeling more like a tool with a purpose. However, this polished section here as you can see cuts into the case and underneath. This little trick really helps it to manage that 13.5mm thickness and feel much slimmer on wrist. From this angle, we can also see that the lugs are drilled to allow for easier changing of straps. Speaking of straps, the stock bracelet on this Seiko seems to be a bit of a rarity among Seiko dive watches. Where many bracelets on their watches look like an afterthought, and make no attempt to match the shape of the case or the lugs, this bracelet actually looks like it was designed for this watch. It's a crazy thing to be praising for a brand I know, but it's the truth. The end links match the angle, shape and size of the lugs they are sitting between, and flow nicely into the rest of the bracelet. The bracelet itself is fairly straightforward, a three-piece link that is brushed on top and polished on the side. There is also a small polished section on the inside of the link to catch and play with the light as it moves around the wrist. Like many other Seiko watches in this price range, it uses the pin and collar system for removing links, which I think is perfectly fine as long as you know what you're getting into before you start trying to resize it. 
If you're not though, those little collars can be very easy to lose. We're approaching the only real complaint I have with this bracelet, and that's the clasp. It's a double pusher, with a fold over security, and a diver's extension with plenty of micro adjustment positions. So, what would I have to complain about? Well, just the fact that it's pressed rather than milled. When you can buy a milled clasp on AliExpress for about $6, I can't understand why Seiko, who are producing thousands upon thousands of watches, would skip on this when economies of scale would mean it would only cost them a fraction of that $6 to add. All links and end links, however, are solid as you would expect. While we're back here, we can see the case back with the Seiko Wave and lots of details about the watch etched into it. It screws down along with the crown to provide 200 meters of water resistance, which it needs to be a diver's watch. What's interesting from back here is also the way that the lugs are cut into to make space for the case back and cut down on thickness a little bit. Now, this is a dive watch, so there are two elements it needs. One is that rotating bezel to keep track of your time underwater. The other is loom on the hands, indices and bezel insert. Thankfully, Seiko's Lumibrite has a reputation for being excellent loom, and this samurai is no exception. When the lights go down, the time on this watch stays visible thanks to how brightly the watch glows. The bezel by comparison is a bit underwhelming. It, like many of Seiko's other dive watches, uses a click spring mechanism for the bezel, and results in an action that feels less defined and spongy when compared to some other watches. The sound of the clicks are also much less satisfying. In isolation, it's not too bad, but when compared to some other watches, it's quite noticeable. Now, with all that out of the way, let's get it on wrist and see how it wears. Even though it's a big watch, Seiko have made a number of design choices to help it feel smaller and thinner on wrist than it actually is. As you can see, it sits quite flat on wrist, and the bracelet is quite comfortable too. One thing you can't escape is the weight. You've got a big, heavy watch on your wrist, and you're not about to forget that. Switching out the strap to a NATO or rubber strap definitely helps to manage the weight better, as we'll soon see. As I turn my wrist and the dial catches the light, you can really see the blue pop. Next up, we have this black rubber strap with contrast blue stitching that matches the color of the dial perfectly. I really like this combo and it's super comfortable. A grey strap also works really well, picking out the grey of the bezel. Be that rubber or NATO strap. The strap that this watch works well with just keep on coming. This orange nylon one is an interesting one. Blue and orange are complementary colours, and wearing this watch and strap combo is the only time I've ever been complimented on my watch. I'm not sure exactly what that means to be honest. So, it should be pretty clear that I'm a big fan of this watch. After all, I've already said that it ticks most of my boxes. I did mention that I'd like to see a milled clasp at this price from Seiko, but other than that, there isn't really much I feel needs to be changed. Maybe it could do to be a millimeter or two smaller, but it's comfortable and carries its size well, so it's not a big issue for me. This of course, goes for all samurai watches, not just this one, but I can't say the same for the turtle, which is what I decided between for this Save the Ocean Limited Edition. I tried it on, but it just didn't feel right whereas the samurai did for me. If you're looking for a solid, reliable, good looking dive watch, a Seiko Samurai is definitely worth considering. What do you think about this watch? Have you got a Samurai or other Seiko diver in your collection? Do you disagree and prefer the turtle to the Samurai? Let me know in the comments and I'll see you next time.